Hello everyone, welcome to video two of lecture seven. So in this lecture, we're going to talk about uh, another important measure, which is called the maximum drawdown or max drawdown. So it has its own importance because the previous risk uh, re adjusted return measure, which I'll talk about is sharp ratio. Uh, now sharp ratio itself is not um, risk sensitive, meaning the um, the upside risk is, is treated as the same as downside risk. So upside risk, meaning if we are holding assets, the price is going up and that's actually preferred. So the downside risk is really the risk that we want to avoid. Right? So the drawdown itself is a concept that used to measure specifically the downside risk. So it is defined as the maximum loss in percentage terms from the previous high wealth to the subsequent low wealth. So there are multiple terms here. The previous high wealth, meaning the uh, what is the uh, highest uh, wealth uh, asset value that I had, I've had in the past uh, given period. So this is the cumulative high, right? Cumulatively, what is the highest point? Subsequent low means my current point, if it's lower than the previous high, then I have a, a drawdown. And this drawdown means, means uh, I will have a gap between the previous high and the current time point. And I will look at a course different periods and then look at what is the maximum gap. And this maximum gap is the maximum uh, loss. And I will normalize it to get the percentage and uh, this is called the max drawdown. So it measures the worst return from the peak of the historical data to the trough, uh, which we have, could have experienced. So it is a hypothetical value and it only happens if we are unlucky enough, right? Over the investment period. So it gives an indication of how bad the worst case scenario could be, right? It's a hypothetical value. I want to assess the downside risk, uh, meaning that in the extreme case, what's the, the worst case can be. So it does not necessarily reflect the actual returns of a training strategy. Now to calculate the max drawdown, there are a few steps involved. Uh, again, we, we start from the real time series of the asset price. It could be daily, it could be monthly. Right. And uh, we will convert it to the daily or monthly returns. Uh, these are the percentage returns generated uh, for the specific training strategy. And then we formulate the so-called wealth index. So this represents the evolution of our portfolio value over time. So if you have one dollar uh, in my account at day one, how does it evolve? Right, if I follow a specific strategy across time. And we can, based on the wealth index, calculate the daily drawdown or monthly drawdown. So this is a single period drawdown. And it is calculated as the percentage difference, right? Percentage gap between the previous peak value and the current value. And based on these uh, single period drawdowns, we can extract the max drawdown, right? Um, so, uh, which is the, the worst case drawdown. Now, uh, the, the plots on the left uh, has the wealth index, right? So this wealth index, which uh, signals the, the growth of my wealth, right? evolution of my wealth over time. And uh, which is in blue. So if you see that I have, I'm denoting the cumulative max by the green curve, which means that at each point, I want to know what is the peak value uh, cumulatively, right, in the past. So if the price continues to increase, then these two lines overlap. But if the price starts to decrease, my cumulative peak stays the same, right, because there's no prior uh, value that's higher than this point. So it stays as flat and then continues to grow, then start to overlap again and then uh, uh, becomes flat again. So this is the, 
the curve of the cumulative peak. Now, if we take the difference, take the gap, and then uh, convert it to percentage terms, just to divide it by uh, a, a term, and then uh, to convert it to percentage, then this actually becomes the single periods drawdown, right? So at first, is uh, the gap is zero because it's overlap, and then uh, it goes goes down because the gap is becoming become bigger. Then the gap closes, so it becomes flat again. So meaning the drawdown is zero, and then it becomes to to uh, the gap becomes bigger again. So this curve is the drawdown curve. And we want to look at the maximum drawdown. We just take the minimum of this curve. Uh, of course, it's negative terms, but when we usually report it, we report it as a positive uh, measure, positive number. But then we calculate it, we'll take the minimum of the whole drawdown curve because it is a negative uh, value. All right. Um, so let's look at the downside of drawdown risk. So we know that uh, it's actually very, uh, because it, it relies on two inputs, the current wealth value right, at the current time point and the cumulative peak wealth value historically, what is my peak? So these two inputs may have outlier values, right? Outliers would be a sudden jump in the price uh, or the sudden drop in the price, right? So this gives us uh, the high sensitivity, this exposes the drawdown risk to uh, risk measure to high uh, sensitivity to the inputs, right? So, uh, so that's, uh, it depends on the, the inputs and it's very sensitive. So the, the other downside of using drawdown risk is its dependency, right? Dependence on the frequency of the observations. So meaning if we look at the daily or weekly Jordans based on the weekly or daily returns, then uh, it actually exhibits, exhibits a higher degree of volatility when we look at the monthly Jordans, right? At a less granular level, right? Because uh, uh, the more granular, uh, even daily or hourly, the more fluctuations we would expect. And these fluctuations give us uh, the and the bigger, the, uh, uh, higher max drawdown, right? Okay, so that's about it. And uh, lastly, let's illustrate the calculation of the max drawdown. Again, this will be covered uh, later in our lab session. So first we have the daily returns, right? For Google and Microsoft. We know that uh, this is the data for the first two months of 2023. And that was a big dip in Google's surprise. And this has to do uh, with uh, the its recent introduction of its bot products, which is a large scale language model, right? And uh, to compete with its rival, which is called Chat, uh, ChatGPT from Microsoft. All right, and so we will then convert it to a uh, wealth index. Right? This is an evolution of the wealth index based on the daily returns. Uh, we we'll still look at the daily level, and then uh, we calculate the daily drawdown, right? So, which is converted to a percentage terms, and uh, and you see that uh, Google is actually having a big drawdown at this point, and this also gives us the the max drawdown for uh, for Google uh, at this point, right? Because uh, because it's a sudden drop in price. All right, so that's it. And uh, thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.